Welcome to PHT in the Morning with your host, Pastor David Miller from the Pentecostal Holiness Tabernacle in Cincinnati, Ohio. Good morning and welcome to another episode of PHT in the Morning with Pastor David Miller. And I'm excited to share again with you today. We've been talking to you, and we're going to for the next a couple of episodes about something new or new things happening. So we talked to you uh, on our podcast last week about new mercies, where the Bible said that his mercies is new every morning. So I want to talk to you today about a new heart. And I'm going to read a verse here in the book of Psalms in chapter number 51, the book of Psalms, and verse number 10. Actually, I think I'll read verse 9. The Bible said, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thine Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. So this is some great verses here in the book of Psalms chapter 51. But look at verse number 10 with me again. Create in me a clean heart. And that should be our prayer today. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that, about a clean heart or a new heart. And I'm just glad the Lord can do that for us today. And so uh, there's a lot of scriptures here. Uh, I would like for you to follow along with us in the podcast uh, today. And we know that the Bible talks about Uh, how evil the heart can be. Matthew, actually in chapter 12 and the 34th verse, he spoke to a group of people and he said, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So he's telling them here in this verse, if you have an evil heart, then you cannot speak good things. If you have an evil heart, you're going to speak evil things. But if you have a good heart, you'll speak good things because it's from the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaketh. And if we're being evil, think we're going to say good things, then the Bible said, uh, he uses that title, a generation of vipers. So, wow, what a verse uh, to be used there. And there's a, there's a couple of uh, other verses I'd like for you to look at. In, in the a book of Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9 and 10, the Bible said, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. He said, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. So he he tells us here, Jeremiah says, the heart is deceitful. Not only is it deceitful, but above everything, above all things. And the heart is desperately wicked. So until we have a, a change of heart or until we repent uh, and become born again and get a new heart, then we're going to be speaking uh, evil things because our heart is yet deceitful, as the Bible says. There's another verse I want you to look at in verse uh, 19 of Matthew chapter 15. And that verse is pretty powerful. That verse says, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, 
murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, and blasphemies. So when you, when you really stop and you look at this verse, and I knew this verse was in the Bible for many, many years, but just in my studies today, this morning, I was looking at this and wow, this is unbelievable. This is amazing because the Bible, the Bible said it's out of the heart when you have these evil thoughts. That's coming from your heart. So if, if you've been having thoughts, ungodly thoughts, evil thoughts, if you've been having uh, those things, it's because that your heart is not right with God. And murders, when I read that, I was like, wow. I knew the Bible said that, but he said murder, that begins in the heart. All murders, and even if it's a murderous thought or murderous words or the act itself of committing murder, that comes from the heart. Adulterers or adulteries, actually the Bible says it like that, adulteries or fornication. He said those come from the heart. They proceed out of the heart or theft. You know, when you talk about somebody stealing or something like that or uh, a thief or something like that, you think of the... Uh, of the action of stealing. But if we stop and look at it a little further, it said, even that proceeded out of the heart before the act was ever committed to rob or to steal. It first came from an evil heart. And this is one that I think everybody ought to listen to, a false witness. Now you, I, I would, I would think about evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, uh, fornications, and and thefts. But false witnesses, you know, sometimes we don't think that that's so bad. But the Bible said that comes from an evil heart when someone gives a false witness. Now that could be to tell a lie, or even far lesser than telling an actual lie. If you bear false witness or if you just uh, say something about someone uh, that's evil or not altogether correct or altogether right, then you need to be very careful. Don't bear false witness. It comes from an evil heart. Or blasphemies. All of those things the Bible said comes from an evil heart. So those are some uh, powerful verses. So I've been talking to you now for the first few minutes about an, an evil heart, how deceitful it is, and how these things proceed forth from an evil heart. But I want to go to the verse now that I read to you at the beginning of the podcast, Psalms 51.10. What should we do then if we know that our heart is not right with God, then God is able to give you a new heart. The Bible said in Psalms 51 and 10, I'll read it again. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. I mean, God's not going to physically take... Uh, your heart and physically put a new one in. But he said, give me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. And Lord, renew within me a right spirit. So God is able to do that very thing. Thank God uh, for those verses here today. And Ezekiel 11 and verse 19 here the Bible said, I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within you. I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. 
So the Bible's saying God can take that stony, hard heart, and he can change that and give you a, a uh, new spirit, uh, one heart. I will give them one heart. What, what would that be? Well, that's a, a heart like God's heart, that yours and his could be one, that you would be thinking godly thoughts, good things, you know, the Bible said in one place, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely. The Bible said, think on those things. So if you have an evil heart, you're going to think about evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, uh, thieving, false witness, and blasphemies. But if you have a clean heart, you're going to think on lovely things, just things, right things, pure things, totally the opposite of an evil heart. How will I get a heart like that? Well, Ezekiel said, I'll give you that kind of a heart. God will give you that kind of a heart. And, and Psalms, of course, we get it because God said, I will uh, create a clean heart within you. Thank God for these verses. I love I love these verses as I read them uh, to you this morning and share with them with you this morning these verses. And you know it's like when we think, well, you know, I my treasures here, or this is what I really want to do or to be doing. Well, did you know if you have a desire? to do other things that's not righteous or godly or holy, then that's because what Matthew said in chapter 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So if your mind is on reading God's word, going to church, loving your neighbor as yourself, doing good things, then that's because your treasure or your heart is there. But if your heart is about uh, doing unrighteous things, it's because your heart is thinking about those things. God, the Bible said, can keep our hearts. Proverbs 4.23. The Bible said, out of the heart are all the issues of life. And God can keep our heart with all diligence. Uh, there's so many great verses here, and I'm trying to uh, look and see which is which is some great verses I can give you here. Uh, you know, the Bible said when we love God, that ought to be with all of our hearts, all of our soul, and all of our mind. So even when you serve God, that should be with every bit of your heart. And we should trust the Lord according to Proverbs 3, with all of our heart. And don't lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. How does that happen? When we trust God with all of our heart. Thank God. You know, the Bible said in John 14, 27, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. How can that be? How in the world, in the world we live in today, where sickness and disease is running rampant in the world, where hatred for our fellow man is seemingly uh, almost everywhere, with all, all uh, uh, great amounts of ungodly acts of sin going on, how? Can I not let my heart be troubled or afraid? Well, you do it because what he said in John 14 and verse 27, by having the peace of God. He said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Then he said, don't let your heart be troubled. So if you have the peace of God within you, then you won't have to be worried or troubled or afraid. 
There's some great benefits to getting your heart changed and to getting your heart right with God. You know, uh, we have to have a change of heart, not just a change of mind. I've talked to folks, said, you know, repentance is a change of mind. And to maybe to some degree, but I believe that real repentance will will cause a change of heart, not just a change of mind. And you know, the Bible said to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. So many great verses. Uh, the Bible said that the Lord can keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus in Philippians chapter four. So many great verses. Psalms 37 and four said, delight thyself also in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. I thank God for that. And you know what? I believe if we really get our hearts right with the Lord, I believe we don't have to be sad or downcast or downtrodden. I don't believe we have to have a broken spirit about us. I believe what the Bible said in Proverbs 17, 22. He said, there a merry heart does good like a medicine. Thank God for that. So we don't have to have a broken spirit. We don't have to go around with a sad uh, our heart and sa- our heart saddened, but we can have a merry heart, and that will be like a medicine to us. Thank God for that. The Bible said, even the words that come out of our mouth, and even the thoughts, or actually the Bible calls it the meditations of our heart. He prayed in Psalms. 1914, David did and said, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. So our words and our meditations of our heart, we need to pray, God, let them be acceptable unto you. So, Thank God for that today. You know, the Bible said the good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You know, I heard a a story that an evangelist told one time. And he said he heard this man that was supposed to be or had been a preacher of the gospel. But he said he got very angry when he didn't think anyone was around. And he he began to curse and swear uh, quite a lot. And then he looked and saw this other uh, preacher in the crowd. And he just thought he was in a crowd of people, didn't know there's another preacher there. But when he saw him and looked at him and he said, excuse me, uh, Reverend, he said, I don't know where in the world that came from. I just don't know where those words came from. Then the preacher spoke and said, I do. It came from your heart. So you see, the man was cursing and swearing against God and all of these things. And then he tried to say, I don't know where it came from. But it did. It came from his heart. That's why the Bible said an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart does that which is evil. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, but also a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. And the same words is said because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So, We need to be praying, God, give us a clean heart. Create within me a clean heart. Lord, I don't want to speak evil things or cursings, but I want to speak good things and blessings. The Bible also said in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, 
for they shall see God. I know there's folks that actually don't believe that it's possible to have a, a pure heart. But I'm not going to go against God's word. And Matthew, one of the 12 disciples, the first book of the New Testament, those were in his book, but that was in Matthew 5 and 8. So those words came from Jesus Christ himself on the Sermon on the Mount, which lasted through three chapters there in Matthew, that Christ himself said, blessed are the pure in heart. So thank God. You can only be pure in heart if God creates within you a clean heart. Or as the scripture said, when he gives us one heart with God or creates within us a new heart. So we've been talking to you, like I said, the last uh, couple of weeks about uh, new things, new mercies last week and a new heart this week. Well, I know I've went over my time just a little, but I hope you've enjoyed our podcast episode today. And I, I really pray that God blesses you and all of your family and friends. And I'm praying for you to have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. So till next week, This is Pastor David Miller, and I'm praying for you. Have a great day.